Good morning YouTube. Welcome to another video. Today we are detailing a 1998 Toyota Spacia in preparation for the owner to post the car for sale. I'll go through all my steps that I normally take for a car of this age but as you can see here it's in pretty decent condition considering it's almost 25 years old. So sit back, relax, hopefully you guys may get something out of the video. Let's get started. The first thing I like to clean is the engine bay. You can skip this step if your car is newer and your engine bay is already looking pretty clean. But for here, we're going to blow off any loose dirt. I'm using the big boy mini car dryer, but you can use a leaf blower. Next is to cover or disconnect the battery. I'm just using a plastic bag here and it works just fine. You also want to cover the air filter if it's exposed and normally I like to cover the alternator as well, although it's not necessary from what I've been told. Now there is a step that I've missed here while filming which is to rinse the bonnet and engine bay first. So on this occasion I went straight to spraying it with a cleaner and here I'm using the Brake Buster Total Wheel Cleaner which is great to use for the engine since it's great at tackling dirt, dust and it's also a non-acidic cleaner. I pair it with the IK Foam Pro 2 sprayer with a dilution of about 1 to 9 with water. Give it a good spray from top to bottom, let it soak there for a couple of minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll get my brushes. I'll start with the bonnet and I'm using a tire brush for this. Basically just agitate, agitating the surface, getting into all the corners and already I can feel or I can see that the dirt is really mixing well with the um, the brake buster so you should rinse off quite well after this I'll be grabbing a detailing brush and agitating all the crevices and areas you see a buildup of dirt you can go pretty in-depth with this but for time's sake I'm just doing a quick brush quick clean and it's more just to get the engine pretty clean um, and tidy now we'll rinse off everything making sure we don't get too close with the pressure washer we don't want to damage anything and now again with the car dryer, we'll get rid of as much water as we can, especially anything around the electricals, spark plug covers, and the air filter coverings as well. Now that most things are dried, you can remove the plastic bags. And I like to finish with dressing some of the covers and rubber with a microfiber towel just to give it a nice sheen. And here I'm using Autoglime's bumper and trim gel. After this, we're pretty much done. So here's a quick before and after. We're not after a full restoration clean, more just a nice freshen up for sale. Next we move on to the tires and wheels. Again I'll grab the IK Pro Foam 2 sprayer which already has the brake buster in it. Spraying enough to cover the whole tire and wheels and leaving it for a few minutes to dwell. This gives us enough time to go around to do the other wheels. Grab the pressure washer and spray everything off. This should remove most of the dirt and gunk on the tire. In this case we have an easier job since we're dealing with hubcaps so we don't have to worry about cleaning inside the barrel of the wheel. Clean the tire with a dedicated tire brush. You don't want to use the same brush on the face of the rims as it can pick up quite a bit of dirt from the tires and damage the rims itself. After doing this, I'll normally use the pressure washer to hose down the bristles of the brush, just to give it a quick clean. Now we'll clean the fenders with a brush as well. Here I'm using the brush, the wheel brush again, which is okay, but eventually I'll grab a long handled dedicated fender brush, which will make reaching in between a lot easier, especially if the car's lowered. Give it a quick rinse again. And inside the fenders as well. Now we'll clean the face of the rims but in this case the face of the hubcaps with a soft bristle brush and this is a separate brush. And then I'll grab a detailing brush to get into the lug nuts and any other crevices we may have missed. Finally thoroughly rinse it down and do the same for the rest of the wheels. Now we're on to the fun part of actually washing the car. 
First step is to give the body a good rinse from top to bottom just to help loosen up the dirt and whatever may be stuck on the car. Then we'll grab our foam cannon and give it a good soak but this time from bottom to top since the bottom is usually the dirtiest and we'll want the soap to be on there the longest. After the car is covered in soap we'll leave it to dwell for a few minutes. One of my favourite things about this part is listening to the sound of the soap fall off the car. Now let's rinse off all the soap again from top to bottom. If you wash your car often enough you can leave the soap on and go straight to the two bucket method which we'll be doing next but if the car's pretty dirty I'd recommend rinsing before moving on to the next step just to help get rid of some dirt. With the car thoroughly rinsed we'll be using the two bucket method. One bucket is filled with clean water and soap and the other is filled with just clean water. Both buckets have grit guards to help trap the dirt to the bottom. It's best to combine the two bucket method with the foam cannon as this does help to agitate and loosen any dirt before we actually make contact with our wash mitts. Back to another rinse, this time to get rid of all the soap and any loose debris. Here's a bonus step if you'd like to be a tad more thorough, which is using something like Geon Iron to help remove any iron fallout on the car. Basically this is any metal iron contaminants that are airborne and can start to stick to the car over time. As it reacts you'll start to see it turn purple, then all you need to do is give it a quick rinse off. I'll be clay barring the car next which is a step you usually use when any parts of the car feel quite gritty to touch instead of a smooth feel. It's also ideal to do before a polish as it helps to remove the heavy contaminants that have really embedded into the paintwork over time. And Here I'm using Bowden's own fine clay bar with a spray lubricant. You always want the surface to be well lubricated so the clay bar is not marring or causing damage to the paint. And as you can see, I'm moving up and down and side to side. Uh, and this just helps to avoid any noticeable swirl marks or marring to the paint. Rinse again and now we can dry the car. And here I'd like to use the big boy car dryer to get the water out of the crevices. And I'm starting top to bottom. After this, I'll grab my drying towel and wipe the water off the windows, mirrors, lights and the body panel. Since we used the clay bar, it's always best to give the car a quick polish to help remove any marring. And here we are using Meguiar's 205 Ultra Finishing Polish with their polishing pad. I apply around 5 or 6 pea sized drops to the pad, then dab it over the area to be polished. Now on the lower speed we spread the polish over the panel and once it's evenly spread you can ramp up the speed to one of the highest ones and start moving from one end to the other in a side to side motion until the whole panel is covered. After doing one or two laps of this you want to go up and down in the same fashion covering the whole panel. Now grab a clean microfiber towel and buff off the polish. I usually repeat this step with a finishing disc pad and the same 205 polish to give off a more glossy finish. Unfortunately with this fender and the bonnet they were resprayed re in the past without great preparation so they've never had a good shine to it and they do look a bit dull. I thought I would try polishing it to see if I could make it better. It definitely helped a bit and made the surface much more smooth but not as great as I'd hoped for with the shine. Have a look for yourself and you be the judge. If you've got any tips for me um, or if you think I should have done something different, let me know. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe doing a compound prior to the polish. Now it's best after a polish to use something like Gion Prep which helps to remove any of the oils left from the polishing stage. It's a very easy step. All you need to do is just spray it on and wipe it off with a clean microfiber towel. Final steps I take is to give the car one last quick rinse, then I can apply Meguiar, Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax, which is a 
great product for long lasting water beading along with producing a nice glossy shine to the car. I have been advised to wipe off the wax with a damp drying towel rather than rinsing it off and then wiping it down and I've seen this produce great results. Lastly we give the tyres a nice dressing and here I'm using Mother's Naturally Black Tyre Shine with the appropriate tyre product applicator. You can apply this a second time around if you're after a wet look. So with this we are finally finished with the exterior detail of the car. And I'm not sure if the video is capturing it well enough but it does look really nice in, in person. It's definitely not perfect but still much better than before. The previous respray on the fender and bonnet made it a little difficult and I am sad I couldn't get it better but overall I'm still happy with the final result. So here's a few snaps of the finished product. Hopefully it looks much better to you guys than when I started, especially for all the steps we took. And now it's pretty much ready for sale. Thanks for watching again guys. Press the like button if you enjoyed or learned something in today's video. Consider subscribing if you're after more car detailing videos in the future and I will see you soon.